Hello everybody, welcome back to Khadi Yamas' live stream component for the Festival 2021. I am No Compliments, I am hosting today's live stream along with my partner in crime, Beck Plexus. This is our second day of that amazing opportunity. Bit of an upgrade from last year, but uh, we are very much enjoying ourselves here. So, today, it's the last day of the festival, sad face, however, it is a very auspicious day. I can feel the tension in the air. Today, the prize will be announced of the Khadi Amis Award. We have four amazing nominees, but before we get there, we have a full program full of other adventurous music that we need to get through, which is going to be amazing. So sit back, relax, and the first thing that we're going to hear and see is a contribution from Portuguese composer Igor C. Silva. We're going to see behind the scenes of his creative uh, contribution to Khariamis this year, which included a premiere of a new opera, which was last week, and it was a tremendous success. So. Without further ado, here's Igor C. Silva. Igor Silva, you happen to be a multimedia composer, is that correct? That's correct. Using multidisciplinary means to get your message across. Yeah, I mean, you can blend a lot of different media to, to create a certain kind of expressive work that tells something that you want to tell, right? So music, it's more than enough, and most of the times it is for me. Sound, it's my main uh, focus, of course. But there is times that uh, you know, video, lights, and other media makes all the sense to tell, to you know, to, to use it to tell a story. Uh, and particularly in this piece, which is you know, a kind of an opera, music theater, whatever you want you want to call it, makes all the sense to to use and abuse basically uh, from different media. Uh, besides, besides the sound, of course, besides the music. To get a bit personal and, and the learning process, what's your background? Where do you come from? How did you start expressing yourself when there was no Instagram? Did you play guitar? How did you learn music? When there was no Instagram? Yes. I started guitar when I was, I started playing guitar when I was, I don't know, seven. Um, then I started writing music, uh, I don't know, when I was a teenager because, yeah, because it seems interesting to try something and to invent something. And then gradually things became, you know, more and more interesting and more appealing to me. Until the point that, of course, I studied composition at a certain point. Um, yeah, and then that's when I came to Amsterdam after. Because you come from? I come from Portugal, from Porto. Um, and uh, yeah, and then I did my bachelor and my master's there in composition. Then I came to Amsterdam to do my live electronics master, which was a, a really really interesting and, and relevant uh, decision, looking back now. Relevant course. to this piece as well? Uh, yeah, uh, well, relevant to everything that I do now. Yeah. I mean, everything is relevant, but coming to Amsterdam is, was, uh, well, was a, back then it was a kind of a crazy decision, or a kind of very impulsive decision. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think one year after I came here, I realized, all right, this, is a, this was the right choice. Um, and uh, yeah, and I still believe that. And it has enabled you to enrich your palette of expression, for example, for the premiere you're just about to share with us. Yeah, uh, well, Amsterdam brought a lot of things, right? Um, well, first of all, brought the masters that I was there was that I was studying, in, uh, and w which gave me a, a lot of knowledge, tons of knowledge that for the things that I w always wanted to do. And finally, I was technically able to to, to do it, which is also very important. And at the same, and then of course at the same time, a lot of things happen, like uh, you know, a lot of connections with a lot of musicians. I, cre I co-created the Trash Panda Collective, which is my our ensemble uh, that um, that we, we started in 2016. Um, that was also a very kind of big change for me and for all of us. Uh, yeah, so it really enriched my 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 artistic background, of course, and. Um, and it, it, the opera is kind of, it's, it, yeah, we are talking about this since, I think, 2017. So it's been, this idea has been around for quite a long and finally it happened. So it's not, uh, it's not a, the end point. It's not ripe enough to be more than an opinion. Yeah, I guess so. It's just, you know, it's just, just a story. I think right. it's just a story. Hopefully tell something. Hope, hopefully it has some reflection. Hope, hopefully it gets some irony behind it and some fun behind it, I guess. But it's, it's just that, it's, yeah. 
Wish you all the best with the premiere and we'll Thanks. enjoy. Take care. That is the story I wrote. Hungover, covering up my own calluses and then opening my imagination. I can hardly hear this track.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the studio in Club Nine. I have sitting in front of me Genevieve Murphy. I'm very excited to have a chat with you about uh, the piece that you have had performed here at Khariyamas this year, which I believe was a, a, initially a commission by Rewire. Is that right? Yes, exactly it was. So I originally I made a theatre piece that was a solo, mm -hmm. and in that solo there are songs. And the songs featured in that solo I now turned into a concert version. Super And that's cool. where I brought in a band. Awesome. Yeah, and uh, I was reading a little bit about... I actually saw the registration that you had made for Rewire earlier in the year, which was super fun and great to have. Uh, yeah, which, which venue were you in when you recorded that? That was in the, like, the Stadtreiberg of The Hague, right? This was, nice. I think so. Yeah, the Royal. Yeah, it was, it was really nice to see a venue. It had been in the middle of that lockdown period. And yeah. <laughs> and it was funny also because there was this uh, screen, like a, what do you call it, a gauze. Like a, a scrim or something. Yeah, and then the auditorium was behind, like mm. all the chairs. Mm -hmm. So it's really beautiful. And then in the film, I was like, wow, isn't this amazing? But actually, I saw in the camera that it doesn't pick up all the chairs in the oh. background. <laughs> so I was just kind of staring at this gauze. <laughs> That's good. Like, this is fantastic. Yeah, it gives you a look of, yeah. like, uh, bewilderment. And yeah, and yeah, 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 exactly. So I think that adds. Yeah. For yeah. sure. So uh, I believe this, this work which is entitled I Don't Want to Be an Individual All By Myself. On or my, or own. my Own. Yeah. On my own. Yeah. This is uh, inspired by something quite personal. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's around my eighth birthday party. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a combination between me turning eight and uh, my mother uh, having her birthday three days before and we shared our birthday party. So it's, okay. a, it's like, it was a mixture of me and my friends and then her friends and, uh, and like her students and things. And she's an artist. Okay. So it's kind of like this mixture between me becoming more aware of my vulnerability and at the same time, um, also reflecting on where I am now. And also as an artist, as a child, looking at a performance artist and thinking, mm -hmm. uh, what, what on earth is that? To now kind of, when I'm talking as him, it's also a bit like, well, I'm also a performance artist. So mm -hmm. it kind of like, it's all a big mixture of me, but also all of my strange memory of the past and of this party and all these people I met. And it became an appropriate story when I was looking into the subject of empathy. Because mm. empathy is kind of the, was actually the starting point for my research. And um, it was also because of meeting all these different characters and also becoming more aware of myself and in what way can I have empathy for that situation and for people I don't understand mm -hmm. rather than feeling afraid of them? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot about curiosity in this, in this piece. And um, that's also when I was making the songs for this, I was aware of the story. So I had different songs that were related to different people within this story. Yeah, cool. Um, so I'm going to ask you... Uh, so you're talking about these shared birthday parties. Mm. How uh, how often did, did that happen when you were growing up? Because that's a, I can imagine that's quite at the age divide. And for what what does that mean for the vibe of a party? If you have adults in were, they, were you in separate rooms or was there? No, totally mixed. It's all mixed. All mixed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it, well, we did it for quite a few years. Yeah, it's really fun actually. And um, and also, cause I don't like there were art students and stuff there. So mm. and then when they're drunk, they're like children yeah, as it's, well. Yeah, it's the same. Know? So we were, and one part of the story is rolling the drunk up mm. the garden. That was the game that we. <laughs> and you didn't do. have yeah. uh, your other friends, their mothers or fathers, getting upset of the idea of. I think uh, my mum was always trying to make the best birthday party oh, there could great. be, but of course. Um, if she could, you know, like, you can embrace the situation that it was, but of course there's also the parents of these children yeah. who are, you know, not not like this and don't mm -hmm. want this. And so they're also, 
they kind of, there's also a bit about them and their kind of perspective on the whole thing. Like, like what's going they, on here? How they judge that a party could be so, in this way, you know? <laughs> Whereas for me, I think it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, that's a, it's a great mix of, of energy, yeah. I think. And we also played this game in the garden and then one of the artists filmed that and then projected it in the house oh, wow. in slow motion <laughs> and then was like right kids cinema and we all had to watch this <laughs> slow motion of ourselves play, playing a game so it's really uh, and that was really like high tech you know that's that like time for video art like indeed yeah. it's like a living installation yeah, this yeah experience yeah. of your birthday yeah <laughs> <laughs> wow so um yeah i wanted to ask you a little bit about your band because uh, it's a very eclectic mix of uh, people who are quite renowned in the, the, the improvisation scene here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to know, how did you put this together and why, why this lineup and what excites you about these people? Yeah. Well, I mean, I've played with all of them in some shape or form. Mm -hmm. And so I got to understand a bit how they, how they play and what they do and something that's really important for me because my background is a composer so I'm writing for classical musicians but if as a musician and a performer myself I'm actually very intuitive and it's less about this kind of fixed score mm. so when I've performed with some of these musicians I really if if I feel that we connect intuitively that's been really inspiring for me so um, yeah, John Dykeman, sax saxophone player, he, he is also, you know, uh, his background is in classical playing. So he, 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 you know, I can give him a score and we can go through the song. But at the same time, if I was to explain the situation of this, you know, how I imagine this song working, he can also interpret that musically. And so I also get something back in mm -hmm. the rehearsals where I get really inspired from him and it's the same also with Marta like when we were playing in a big band I was I, her and me had a duet in that moment and the way that she works with th synthesizers is really similar to me and this really was like oh this is this is what I need is something where I just feel like we can we can flow together mm -hmm. and with Andy as well there's something where I, I speak text and he and I have figured out a way where he plays and I speak and it becomes an equality mm -hmm. so like I always like to think that speaking uh, as a language and playing music is an equally a language and with Andy I feel like we managed to create that balance mm -hmm. and Henning Luther he's a drummer and he's really, um, he's an improviser. He also has a, a lot of understanding of electronic drumming. And he also has that bridge into the pop side, which is also what this music it is. More poppy, experimental pop and electronic, actually. And uh, with Henning, I feel like it bridges into that. So we get a bit more um, finding song structures. And then within that, we can break out of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it yeah. sounds like a lot of different methods of, of dialogue between you as yeah. the maker and with, with, the, with the people that you've chosen. Yeah. Yeah, really active conversation. Yeah, absolutely. It's really like we play and I, 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 I you know, I've got the song. I actually, how I started it was just with my own instruments, layering everything, that's my song. And then, okay, how do I divide this out mm -hmm. and, and give this to all the musicians? But then, of course, from there, I say, like, yeah, I think it would be nice to build here. And then I, then while we're doing it, I can sort of listen out and think, how does this work? And some, sometimes it just gives me so much excitement to, 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 to recognise where we can all go together. And are two shows ever the same of this? No, actually, no. no. Because the film for Rewire, we, we did it twice. Mm. And so we, I also had to listen back, because then I'm also... Quick plugging is that I'm releasing an album, and tonight is the album release. Oh, fantastic! And uh, for that, I used one of the live recordings from the Rewire gig, and I had two versions, and I was really mm. like, oh my gosh, like what vibe do I want here? That was really because they are different. They, of course, they share an atmosphere, mm -hmm. but because of that improvisation, it's got that spontaneity. That's what's really special, actually. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it breathes a, a new type of life into something that you've already determined to share. Oh more. man. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So this project, as I believe it, is also a part of a, a larger development trajectory for the new makers. Ah, yes. Is that, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, well, this is the last piece of my new marker mm -hmm. subsidy. And yeah, it was in collaboration mm -hmm. with the production house, right? Or With the uh, Nicole Boitler project, mm. yeah. 
And how, yes, so they yeah. produced the work. Fantastic. Yeah. And what would you say, like, the, the biggest thing that you've learned from that trajectory is, if you could put it down to one? Yeah, that's good. I think that actually I really needed to get thrown into that situation where I, I had the opportunity then to begin from a blank canvas. So instead of having commissions from musicians where I know the context of where my piece will happen, mm. this was really like, okay, here's a budget, where do you want it to happen? Do you want it to happen outside or in a theatre space? Or, And I also really found like, oh, okay, um, I started to think much more about performance. And actually, um, during that process, I also really learned how important music and sound is for me. And the perspective of a concert and all of this is more, is closer to my honest, honest self when it comes to, um, yeah, just having ideas and getting inspired because I know I know what a concert can do and that's my background and music is really feels more like my language and I really enjoy integrating text into that and it does become performance in the end mm -hmm. with the stuff that I do but the biggest thing I learned was actually to really recognize the yeah, the, the, the music and sound is a companion, actually. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I can start to think about the live experience, which can become performative. Mm. Yeah, it's really that, that bridge between the theatrical and the more performative elements of, of what you would expect from a live music performance in pop or exactly. like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, it's actually that kind of like, where do you start from? Mm -hmm. If you start from the perspective of music, then you'll kind of, you can allow yourself to grow into performance. Mm -hmm. Or you start from the pers perspective of performance and allow yourself to grow into, into sound. But for me, it starts from music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's a fantastic thing to learn. That was a big <laughs> thing to learn. Yeah, I had to do a full circle. Yeah. <laughs> Come back to that, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that will influence the, the future things that you make as well. Yeah, I'm curious. <laughs> so, uh, another thing, just, just before we finish, the lead single from this album that you're, you're releasing tonight is Your Feeling, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that we did this last time that, we, uh, that I had the privilege of, of interviewing you, which was uh, for the live stream last year, Harry Amos. But I was just wondering if perhaps you could do a little bit of the facial gymnastics, maybe one or two. <laughs> <laughs> people <that laughs> you mean that one? <laughs> yeah. For the people that don't know, this uh, this film clip that was made for this single is uh, it's it's is one take, right? It's a one take shot. Yeah. Fairly, uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Fairly squared in on your face. Yeah. And it's uh, yeah. I'll just let. Uh, <laughs> I won't talk to you. No, can... you keep talking, and they can decide which part who they show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh yes, it's one take of, yeah. uh, of a choreography that was initially from an improvisation, right? Yeah. It's, uh, that's what... <laughs> I can't keep talking while you're doing this. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. You do, I'll do it on cue. I'll do it on cue. <laughs> okay, yeah, so it okay. started uh, fairly improvisational. And then I believe it was a, your partner that was behind the camera yeah. that was then giving you some directions yeah. of which, yeah. which, what to say. Maximum stupid face, <laughs> maximum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish we could, uh, we could stream this in the stream, but uh, maybe a little preview, maybe yeah. a few moves for us. Yeah. Okay, yeah? Uh, now, okay. So there was this. Fantastic. Um. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah. Oh, well, I was told that this one, it might, might, it was told this one is what the face I do when I do, my partner was like, do that thing where you do when you play the bagpipes. And it's like, I go like, it's frog and face. that thing comes out like, yeah. that's it's a big one. Yeah. Really in incredible. But yeah. I got muscle pain from that. I guess. Yeah, it doesn't really look that natural, I have to say, but no. oh, wow, wow. Yeah, it's full Does no one do that one? Can no one? I don't know if that's not normal, no. No? No. <laughs> There's more. <laughs> but it's fantastic. Okay, well, thank you so much. For All right. <laughs> Super lovely and great way to finish also. Yeah, thank you. And, Thanks uh, for having me. Hopefully we'll see you next year as well. Yeah, hopefully. Cool. Thanks.
Right behind these walls, you can also see it on the monitor here, we have the Black Page Orchestra. It's one of the larger ensembles this year and also the final concert of this edition. Sad, very sad. However, that means that we're getting closer and closer by the minute to the results of the Gary Amos Award 2021. So we can hold on to our excitement a little bit longer just so we can see the Black Page Orchestra perform. I hope you enjoy. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now we're here with the artistic director of Gaudiamus, Martijn Puser. Hello. Hello. It's Sunday night. So we've almost had everything of the whole festival. How, how has it been for you so far? First of all, we're all tired. We probably think we had like 60 events happening in five days time. We're so happy that tonight we can finally give one of the four young nominees for the Gaudiamus Award the award. So um, I want to thank the whole team for being here with us uh, for five days and whole preparations. And um, but it's been an amazing week. It's been a, it was fantastic to have audience in the uh, visiting concerts. Uh, you know, last year we asked you to do a Saturday night online program. Um, we did a lot of other live stream events, uh, but you know, like we miss the contact with 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 music on stage. The real so, deal. The real yeah. deal. So we missed it, and luckily this year we we could do it. Yeah, I, I was also wondering because indeed we we've had this kind of two years strange period behind us now. In in which ways do you think Gaudiamus has evolved or transformed over this time? We're kind of now back in a physical position addition, but how is it different compared to two years ago? Well, the difference now is that uh, we'd like to have the, uh, the physicality of a festival, but also the, the visual or the, the, the digital side, like this event. Mm. Uh, we'd like to have that in combination for the coming uh, years. Also because, it, it, uh, like, Gaudiamus fans are all over the world, but they can't come uh, each year. Uh, to Utrecht, uh, also because it's quite, uh, uh, it's, uh, you have to have a, uh, a lot of money to, mm -hmm. to come over here, uh, to be in the Netherlands for a whole week, for instance, and uh, in this way we're in close contact with them because they can see and watch us online. So they are with us. So that's, I think, uh, the, the advantage uh, that we have learned from the past two years, that we're close to the fans uh, outside of the Netherlands. And uh, so I think this is a sort of continuation of what we developed last year. And we'd like to d further develop it for the coming years. Yeah, I think also, indeed, now uh, with this whole online part, um, there's also a whole kind of new uh, alley for art, uh, digital art and video art that has opened, like um, Screen Dive. Um, could you tell a little bit more about Screen Dive also? Yeah, for Screen Dive, uh, we developed it together with uh, Luke Dean and Maya Felixpot. Uh, together with our tech technician, we should say our programmer, but in principle he's the third person, Theoman. And uh, the three of them uh, curate uh, an online playground. Uh, you can say musical uh, games, you could also say it's interactive art, but it's all interactive and it's online. And it's indeed uh, a new approach to give artists uh, the chance to develop something in this in this uh, era, and it's also something very likely that will extend it for, for the coming years, mm. also because we think that the music and, for instance, the game community or the indie game community, community are not that far from each other. So we'd like to interweave of, or interweave these, in, in, you know, yeah, mix them, mix them, mix them, mix them. Because yeah. the, uh, the other side, it's a visual uh, uh, element to the festival, it's online. But on the same hand, we're also having physical elements of screen life now happening in the festival. Oh, really? Such as the playstations uh, where people can, uh, um, can play the, the games, but there's also installations in the building. Uh, and for the coming uh, year, we also plan to do workshops, uh, physical workshops in, uh, here in Utrecht. Oh, exciting. I, I also saw with Diana Verdonk. She is also doing something this year, right? Yeah, Diana has developed uh, her own technology lab. So she's an uh, inventor of new music instruments, or not necessarily music, but sound instruments, installations. Tactile, so uh, uh, she's working with the physicality in it. And uh, she asked a group, well, she didn't ask a group, she, did a, she put out a call. And people from with different backgrounds uh, have applied to be part of the first technology lab, and they presented uh, new instruments in this festival. Super interesting. Yeah, I was also thinking, um, as now all these examples that you're giving, it's really clear that kind of the term contemporary classical music is getting broader and broader and broader. Um, uh, because also yesterday at Saturday night we also saw kind of more pop-oriented uh, music and uh, jazz-influenced music, uh, traditional um, music from other cultures than the West. Um, what would you describe as kind of the common denominator between all the artists that are uh, invited to present something at Gaudiamus? Well, first of all, the, 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 
about the, ter the term contemporary music, I think most people have an idea of contemporary music which is quite narrow. And I'd like to stretch that border, indeed. Um, I think most of the people in the festival have a background in composition. Mm. Um, but um, they are turning into performance artists. They are uh, uh, so uh, physical on stage and not necessarily only, uh, mm -hmm. let's say, in the audience because we, we, we only wrote the notes and the, uh, the ensemble play, uh, performs the music. I think, it's a, I think it's, a, um, uh, it, it's a new development. Well, not, also need, not even a new development. It's, uh, it has always happened that composers also perform their music themselves. Uh, and I like to put that on display um, in this festival. I like to stretch it because I think there's an audience for, for everything. And the fun thing, for instance, is uh, with Thanasis uh, Deligianis, who did this uh, theater performance in the, in the festival, we have a totally new audience, not aware of, contempt of, the, of the term contemporary music. It's actually, it's, it's way more, it's kind of about non-conforming and about keeping things open and flexible and the space for experiment, I guess. Yeah, and it's all people who are finding their own unique fingerprint in the world of uh, whatever we say it's contemporary music. Maybe it's contemporary music, but they're finding their unique fingerprint. Mm. So do, we don't want copycats in the festival. It's just like music we've had, we're, we've been there, and we're showing the people who are finding their, their, their own way uh, their own, and, and writing their own history. Well, I think it's happened again this year. It's packed with unique individuals. Um, I was also wondering, now you actually are in a new position this year as an artistic director. Previously you were a programmer and producer within Gaudiamus. Um, what are you envisioning for the next couple of years? Is there, um, yeah, are you imagining very big di di changes in direction or are we going to just only do dance in the next five years? Or Only dance, no, no, no. Only organ no, it's music. Oh, in Oregon, um, I think it's I think it's all. You know, it's it, it's both in principle. Um, um, I think this is a sort of in between year, because also uh, because of uh, the pandemic, we have postponed many concerts and performances from 2020 to this year, which we. Uh, we were really upset not to put them now in the festival simply because it's they are great. Uh, you know, we gave away lots of commissions uh, with, uh, to uh, many many musicians, and it would be uh, just a waste of time if we wouldn't program it because uh, we want the audience to hear these pieces. So this is a somewhat in between version of where we are heading to, and I think I can imagine that within the next couple of years, I think in three four years time. I think uh, half of the program will not be in the concert halls, but okay. will be outside. So I want to look for the audience outside of the concert halls. In the open air or in, in other air, locations? Also other locations, uh, public spaces. Um, so I want to open that up. So, and then to me, then uh, music or sound is the beginning. Um, uh, but it, you know, you would necessarily name it contemporary music then, but it's like we actually already did like a few uh, 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 few concerts this year. Um, we, uh, we did a listening route with uh, Bau, the members of Bau Collective, which is outside. They did it also last year. Uh, we did a performance with uh, with circus and new music. Uh, we had this technology lab we talked about, so we're already outside, and now uh, uh, I think it's time for us to move on into that direction and also a bit com confronting people in open space with these uh, sometimes installations, sometimes concerts. But I want to, I, I want to uh, go for the audience outside and not necessarily asking them to come inside. Of course, when you see us outside, uh, the incentive would be, okay, I also want to see what's then inside the concert building, what's happening over there. Of course, a, a normal string quartet wouldn't sound at a public open space, but uh, I like to have, um, like, I like to tease somewhat, I like to tease the audience and uh, just gain their interest. can also be confronting to them, whatever, just that they have to have a reaction to it. And hopefully the reaction is then, I will also come to the concert hall. Yeah, I also I think this actually makes me think of also the uh, uh, a year ago Gaudiamus presented this really cute postcard with stickers on it, and it had on it like the unseen and the unheard and the unexperienced. It's kind of it's all about the 
the thing that hasn't happened yet. And it's about the thing that hasn't yet. Forcing people to be surprised. I guess. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we, we, we want our audience just to be as excited and adventurous as the composers and musicians uh, who are performing it. So, open eyes, I would say. Open eyes and open ears. Well, thanks so much. I think we're now very quickly going to go into the award results of tonight and then see, yeah, I guess in some way, w which artist this year has opened our ears the most. Thank you so much and see you next year again. Absolutely. Uh, thank you.
see you next to the piano you're just about to play in a couple of hours from now. Thanks very If you, would like to, if you would like to see the whole show of Ralph, uh, go to the online version of it, uh, Ralph, then uh, we can see it over there. This was a mashup. Mesh uh, before we go over to the ceremony, we'd like to share some gratitude to all the funders and partners uh, that have made this whole week uh, possible. Um, the Municipality of Utrecht, the Performing Arts Fund of the Netherlands, Creative Europe, the Province of Utrecht, Fonds 21, de Prins Bernhard Cultuurfonds, Dioraften, Buma Cultuur, Kaat Heinfonds, Dutch Performing Arts, Elisa Mathilde Fund, Creative Industry Fund NL, Simon Stiftung en Adam Mikiewicz Instituut. En for sure all also the partner here in this building, Tivoli Vredenburg. Thank you very much. And Thanks to all the funders and the partners. We also like to share gratitude to the patrons of, uh, of Gaudiamus. You can donate, uh, you can uh, be friend or a patron for Gaudiamus to make uh, sure that all these young music pioneers can, uh, can still work on, uh, on, new, on new compositions to be heard in this festival. So please be welcome to also become a patron. Come to me afterwards. And This is also made possible by our team. The office itself is not so big, but during this festival our team was expanded exponentially, I have to say, so I had to really write down all the names because the team was quite big. I'd like to thank Rogier, Laurens, Benjamin, Matthijs, Gonas, Mirjam, Rebecca, Mirjam and Rebecca both great interns, Maya, Luke, Theo, Mariska, Yildiz, Marilot, Miriam, Milou, Brigitte, Willemieke, Tom, Emil, Freek, Robert, Remco, Joyce, Samgar, Céline, Pietje, Katharina, Peter, the whole team of Wolfram, Reinier and all the volunteers, because without all the volunteers doing all the location managing, doing all the ticketing, this would also not be possible. So thank you also to the volunteers. And then I'd like to ask the jury to come on stage. Kaliopet Tsupaki, Oscar Bettison, and Karen Tanaka.
So, Oscar, uh, oh, shall I stand left to you? You can stay to the right. Then sure. this is the jury. Oscar, we shall like to mention something about this week. Um, yes, on um, on behalf of my um, uh, uh, dear friends and colleagues and jury members, um, I've been asked to um, speak on their behalf. So I have a few things to um, to say on behalf of all the jury. Um, sorry for having papers, but I won't remember if I don't read. Um, the first thing that, I, that um, we wanted to say is um, just what a, um, an incredible um, pleasure um, it's been to, to share um, this week um, and share, um, listen to everybody's music, um, especially given, <laughs> you know, the last 18 months, it's been, um, it's just been an incredible um, thing to, um, to, to be a part of. And we're very, just very grateful for hearing all this music and... Um, and um, Martin, like you said at the um, at the beginning, like um, about the um, the four nominees, that they really are um, all winners, um, and we um, it was just a real joy to hear their music, and it's um, and we just really think very highly of them. Um, the next thing I want to say um, on behalf of the jury is um, our, our selection process. What we were thinking about when we were. Um, when we were um, judging the pieces and what our criterias were. And we talked about this a, a lot and quite carefully, but we, um, we felt that um, um, all, you know, we, and all the um, nominees have this, but um, we, we, um, we were really interested in music that was um, heartfelt and that had um, passion um, and had some um, uniqueness. And this is a quality that, um, that they all share, but this is, these are the, really the things that we, um, that we really thought about um, a lot. Um, the, um, I will say that um, we also thought that, and this is just one thing to, to think about, but we've heard three pieces by, um, by the four nominees, and we would instantly know who had written each piece. I mean, instantly would no, we would know, uh, without having to have any prompts on us, who wrote that piece. And um, this is a big compliment. Um, to the to the nominees. I mean, this is this doesn't happen that often, um, and we've all been to uh, things where there's a you know there's a lot of pieces and there's a lot of pieces that sound the same, and you know it happens. But this is not the case with our nominees, and um, you know this is why why we selected them. But also this is this is what we got. So this is also um, there's a very very high standard, but also um, for real original um, thinkers. Um, the last thing that we want to say is that um, we also felt that each of the uh, nominees had, a, had an ensemble that really, um, that they really sort of um, worked with really well. We could see it um, in some of these collaborations that for each one there was at least one ensemble that they really, they just gelled with. And um, we hope these collaborations can continue. Um, but we'd also like to say to the, um, you know, composers are always asking ensembles, you know, maybe, you know, um, could, we, could I write something more for you? Could you do this? But we'd also like to say um, to the ensembles that um, we would like for you to reach out too and, um, and reach out to our nominees and, and that um, the impulse can uh, also come from you. Um, so just put that out there. Um, I have uh, just a few statements um, about um, each of the uh, candidates, uh, no, nominees, sorry. Yeah, about the nominees, we're gonna get them on stage. Yes. Let me double check if the, because we have something to give away, we really have a, an award. Can I ask uh, Jen, Tanaka, Jen, no, uh, again, again, Tanaka, then, again, Jenny, yeah, it's difficult. Again, Tanaka, he's here. Um, on behalf of the jury, um, uh, the, uh, we, we feel that um, Gen is a, a, a profound thinker who creates um, ecstatic sound worlds. We would like to see him expand his musical ideas to further mirror um, his thinking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you yeah. 
The next, Jenny Beck. Jenny creates delicate and sensitive soundscapes that achieve complexity in a disarmingly simple way. We would like to see her explore and broaden her musical palette. The next up, we'd like to ask Matthew Ricketts on stage. Matthew is already a very accomplished composer, skilled in orchestration, who has already defined his highly developed musical voice. At last, Annika Sokolowski coming on stage. Annika is a unique, refined performer-composer whose music embraces disparate stylistic elements to create moving and passionate art. Only one goes away with the award. They all won, we always say. Uh, they'll be in our hearts because we will follow all four of them the coming years. So we give them commissions, we co-produce, uh, productions with them, uh, so we exchange people, so it could also be you, so we're not uh, letting you go, you know, we're not letting you go. Uh, but there's only one who goes away with uh, the award. The winner of the Gaudiams Award 2021 is Annika Sokolowski. I ask if you would like to say something, but you're overwhelmed, so you don't have to say anything. It's a, it, was a, it was a fantastic week. Um, I may not hand it over to you because of still of uh, the protocols. Well, we're all in here, but okay. Um, um, I think it's time for a drink. You take this with you. Don't forget it, right? Uh, we'll, we'll also tell you what it is exactly and how you should, and, and, and how you should, so it's an instrument. It's an instrument. So, uh, um, and now it's time for a drink, I think, outside. We're all thirsty. Uh, one more round of applause for all the four nominees.
Around 1900, audiences were no longer allowed to during a performance. One was expected to sit immobile and listen with rapt attention, since no one was talking, eating, or dancing anymore. The music could have extreme dynamics. Composers knew that every detail would be heard, so very quiet passages could now be written. The audience no longer allowed. The audience Hello and welcome back to the studio. I am here with Niels Bros, keyboardist extraordinaire and synthist. And uh, we're here to have a conversation about the, the uh, new production that Niels has in Hariamas this year, which is very exciting and features uh, two other musicians. We have Tony Rue and also James Zhu, I believe. Yes, and yes. Uh, oh, that's all correct. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that's totally correct. Wonderful. So, yes, I, uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this, uh, this production and how it came about. I believe this is a collaboration between Hari Amis and your agency, is that right? Yeah, my agency and uh, the Cooperatie, that's mm -hmm. a, a production house from this city, from Utrecht. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And they gave me the chance to uh, to work on this new set for a while and to try a lot of new things. So I'm really I'm really grateful for that and uh, yeah, really uh, curious how it works out. Great. Yeah. And uh, I was reading a little bit about this and uh, how this has been an opportunity for you to take some inspiration from some contemporary classical composers. Is that right? Yeah, a bit. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I think uh, I, I got a lot of inspiration from a bunch of different things, but my main goal for for this set uh, was to uh, combine a lot of elements I've I've been studying and like practicing practicing for a long time. Uh, I mean, like I've been delving a lot in electronic music and and since for a few years now. Um, and into production and ele electronic music in general. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I've been wondering for a long time, like how can I combine that all in a live set where I don't feel like constricted by songs. So I still have a, a lot of openness in the set and I can do all those things together uh, in a very uh, improvised uh, manner. So my goal is a bit to to like not feel the limits of production. Because mm -hmm. of course, when you're producing, you're always busy with like, like making small differences in sound and, and all the technical stuff. Um, I want to be able to do that live uh, in a way that it feels as natural as playing keys. Wow. Uh, and all those things combined should allow me to make tracks in the moment and to, to completely improvise a set. Um, but then on the other hand, I want to perform songs as well. And what I, what I bump into a lot is when I uh, look for the live translation of a song, um, I always like bump into a lot of walls, so to say, like uh, obstructions. And, and that was a bit the mission to, to like go away from that here and just to find a setup where I don't have that uh, obstruction anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's really ambitious. A lot of, uh, it is. <laughs> a lot of yeah. producers, this is something that uh, in my, myself as an mu uh, electronic music producer come up again all the time, mm -hmm. which is when you make something and that was the result of hundreds of hours of tiny little mouse clicks and fader yeah. adjustments. <laughs> exactly. And then what do you do live? How does that translate? Yeah. What I'm curious about is like, what does that mean for you on stage? What productional elements are you actually combining in this improvised form? Um, like, I try to, like w when I make a track in a computer, it's much more advanced and it has much more layers. Uh, so mm -hmm. the, the most important thing I noticed was like, um, like uh, know what what is what what are the essential elements of a track and what makes a track really a track and and everything you you normally add you you can't 
add that live, uh, but you really want to get to the core of the song. And if 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 that works, it really doesn't matter how you produce it mm -hmm. in the end. But so I really try to find for the, the the core elements of the song, and then study them well enough, and um, so that I can just can still freely play with them. So not everything has to be as long as the original song. Uh, I want to be able to, in the moment, feel like this should be a bit longer. Uh, I should wait a bit with this layer. Mm -hmm. So that's a really, really technical thing. But um, I, I really try to make, a, yeah, how do you say that? Like a, a nice stage for myself to play a certain song in, and that is like a preset wise on all the synths. Mm -hmm. Like it needs a lot of programming, and then you don't want to program too much so that you still feel. Like it's a little playground. Uh, that's basically it. Yeah. Well, you can make choices on the fly, and it's not like the sequencer is really holding you down or something. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, live looping is a big part of that. Mm -hmm. It's always uh, like I, I made a lot of hours live looping, so it took a while before I felt really free. Because mm -hmm. uh, of course, the loop is a loop, and it, and you can feel really. Uh, um, yeah, it can feel really uh, loopy. <laughs> like you can, you, 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 how do you say that? I'm looking Here for it comes the word. Again. Like, <laughs> repetitive? Yeah, repetitive. It can be a, a sort of like an echo chamber of, of something you don't like and something right. you like. So there's a lot of, um, I learned a lot about that. And uh, I think the hard part is always uh, drums mm -hmm. uh, and how many stems are you gonna use are you gonna use stems at all so yep. all these things combined uh yeah make for a really cool like setup to do a song does that mean what we're talking about of having drum stems is that there are some component of this set that actually does include track then there's like some yeah, so like some sounds uh for, for instance like some electronic sounds mm -hmm. i make uh on synthesizers that just simply cannot be transported to Well, here. you only have two hands as well, right? Uh, right. And, I think. And yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah, just I, checking. Last time I checked, uh, I'm currently training my feet as well. Wow. But it's, they're not meant to play. Like little foot keys. pedals of the organ guess, kind yeah, of approach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Joe Sawinol did that. He had like nine foot pedals. I'm not there yet, but that's, that's going to be my next goal. But <laughs> so, yeah, it's really, this setup gives me a lot of different... Uh, you know, angles to to keep on progressing as a musician and as a producer. Mm -hmm. uh, and for me, uh, improvisation has always been really elemental to my music. Mm -hmm. And I really want to keep that uh, energy in the music without, like, you know, falling down the obvious uh, potholes. And still retaining song form when you need to and these sorts of structures, right? Like exactly, it's yeah, yeah. Moving yeah. in and out. That's, oh, that's super fresh. Very nice. Um, what was I also going to ask you about? Well, I did read this thing. Uh, from, what was the other the the other um, collaborator? You had your agency yourself, and then you said there was another. Uh, the Cooperatie. On the Cooperatie's website about this project, there was uh -huh. a, there was actually a mention of it to Steve Reich, and I'm sure the the audience of Chariamas would like to hear you muse on Steve oh. Reich. Like the lot of like a lot of different uh, so so like in, for instant composing I'm looking to a lot of those type of composers because and I really try to find um, the theory or like the formula that's of course there's no formula in their music it would be really degrading to say that he works with a formula but like the, the you know the technical part of the music and the um, uh, the way of writing, uh, for for instance, Steve Reich, I, I re I'm trying to find a way to have that same layering going on in um, so that at any time in a in a jam I can layer stuff that way. Mm -hmm. So I I really studied like how he um, stacks intervals, that sort of stuff, timing uh, stuff. So it's more, it's really. Like I really want the setup to be so open that I can look at a lot of different composers and people and just sure. you know take 
some ideas and then make them my own in, in that setup. Yeah, and keep that uh, in your musical pot of influences. Yeah, and, and Steve Reich is, is a big influence, I think, when you go to live looping, because like yeah, he naturally. composes in a way, so and he does it really musically. So mm -hmm. L logically, that's one composer that you look for. Sure. In that regard, yeah. 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 But phasing, we're done instead of having different delay and feedback times or something like that with real people. That's, yeah, that's mental. That's something else. But you can do that on a on a synthesizer as well. I mean, you can play with the all around with the envelopes, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of different things uh, you can do to to have the same effect, basically. With only one person. With only one person, yeah. yeah. So you really have to think of. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a bit hard to explain for me. Kind of like economics in some way, like economics of energy to results, right? It's yeah, like yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah, yeah. And 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 um, for me, these are all different ways to uh, think of a new song in in the beginning. So a set by a set list for me consists of maybe different techniques. Ah. I can do a jam with, so... Yeah, I was going to ask you about the compositional process for this particular project, and, and yeah. uh, maybe you've just answered it, so the, each yeah. track or each, each improvisation is, is based on a on different... On something, yeah, something, uh, a different way of composing or a different way of, of, of improvising. Or some, some tracks are just, I have like a melody mm. and... Um, yeah, I, went a, bit, I went, a, went a bit back and forth with this because... At first, I try to arrange it all out, put it all in a computer, and then you're playing it at home, and you're like, okay, I'm not making music anymore. That's one extreme, and then the other extreme is you go, you do, you don't do enough. Mm -hmm. So the sweet spot there is somewhere in the middle. Like you don't want to feel restricted by everything that's in the computer, and you you really want to feel that openness to, at any point, uh, change the music. Is that also a reason why you decided to expand it from just yourself to to this collaboration with Tony and James Zeus? Yeah, definitely, because um, for me this is really new uh, and I really like to discover like what other influences people bring that are outside of the setup and that's always going to give me different results mm -hmm. uh, and especially these two. Uh, like Mitchell van Dinter, James Sue, he's really, he can be really extreme in his input, which is going to give me new information to, uh, is going to get me out of my comfort zone because mm -hmm. you don't want to get too comfortable within a setup like this as well because you're going to do the same stuff over and over and you're going to play what, what you know works. Uh, so Tony and, and Mitchell, they function a bit like a... Um, you know, like a guy uh, throwing uh, some vodka in the family punch, something <laughs> like that, you know? Like, they're gonna nice. mess things up so that I'm forced to to step out of that comfort zone. Oh, that's great, a great way to not get so stuck in your own... Definitely. Yeah, your own uh, stumbles or things like this, things you're concerned with. Yeah, yeah, and normally I don't have that luxury, so I was yeah. super happy that I could ask them as well. No, that sounds, uh, that yeah, sounds great. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, I had one more question for you before we finish up. You've had some extremely significant collaborations thus far in your career, from Kite Man all the way to Bink Beats. I want to know, like, who is who's on your wish list to collaborate with? Oh, so many people. Um, you could pick one or two. Like, apart from all the uh, obvious musicians, but... Um, I'm really into Frank Ocean's mm -hmm. music, and then of course D'Angelo, all those greats, all the jazz greats. I would want, would love to. But I'm, I'm a really big fan of a, of a, of a producer called Dim Light. He's from uh, Switzerland. Like I get a lot of inspiration from him. Um, and th these type of questions, I'm gonna be home tonight, and then I'm thinking like, why did I, you know, <laughs> I mention a lot of. A lot of people. I, I really want to to get this this thing uh, to a place where it's really easy as well to to collaborate. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, I think the great thing about this is that it's an, a tool for improvisation, but it's also a writing tool. Mm -hmm. um, and because it's so driven by your intuition instead of like a prefab stuff, it's really open to to to. Uh, 
work together with people. Well, we can consider this part of the interview your business card. Yeah, I to guess. To all future collaborators. Now I'm thinking. Um, man, I'm, I'm really bad at these types of questions. That's all right. Okay. What you gave us was great. Okay. And now this Swedish, Swiss or Swedish? Producer. Uh, it's a dim light, yeah. Dim Everyone light. check out dim light. Yeah, we'll just so we'll make sure that there's an at dim light in the, the description please, below. Yeah, Maybe please you'll see everyone this. check it because he's he's really, in my opinion, underrated. And he's he is he's I mean there are like within electronic music, I feel like there are only a few people like that. Um, yeah. He's a really inspiring Great. Yeah. Hey well thanks for this conversation and uh, Thank you. Really looking forward to uh, up next. Actually, we're going to see you perform. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> pretty exciting. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm uh, wondering how it went. I think it went good. Yeah. I Great. hope. Let's see. Okay. Thank Thanks. You.
there were four worthy winners, but of course there could only be one. Uh, big congratulations to everyone involved and also to Gaudi Amis. Because this is the end of this year's edition, 2021. We hope you had a really good time. We definitely did here in Tivoli, Vredeburg and Utrecht. And I guess then now it's time to start making plans for next year. So um, be in time. If, you wanna, if you're a composer and you want to submit to the award for next year, this is the time to do it. Hope to see you Start soon. Start your plans now. Have a good evening and we will see you hopefully next year. Doei! <laughs>